back to Lit Sports Online. This episode, we're going to be talking about WWE, particularly the Survivor Series pay-per-view of 2016, recapping it for you, talk about where the WWE is going forward from here. Yep. And after an impressive pay-per-view, Goldberg, which I think was the highlight of the night, looked about as young as he did back in 1999 when he beat Brock Lesnar in about two minutes. I think his entrance was longer than his match. Two spears and a jackhammer. It's beautiful. And I think it's impressive that they are bringing back such old wrestlers, kind of trying to gauge that 90s, strong 90s fan base. You know, the kids that grew up in the 90s watching, like, the Goldbergs and The Rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin, those guys. And it's interesting. It's great to see. Um, actually, on SmackDown last week, The Undertaker returned and said that WrestleMania would no longer define him, which signifies he wants to wrestle more matches. And I think that's pretty awesome. But overall... Um, on the special, the, this Survivor Series special, Raw seemed to pull out more victories in their team versus team victories. Um, yeah, well, going back to the Goldberg match, I mean, the, the build-up to it was kind of interesting. Yeah. Uh, you know, how basically Brock Lesnar was saying, oh, yeah, like, your family shouldn't watch this match, going to, like, destroy you, and, you know, and then just to, to, for him to come out and then kind of gets, like, picked up and thrown in the turnbuckle yeah. and, like, it doesn't do anything. He I mean, just spears him and jackhammers him and that's it. Like, I, mean, I was <laughs> impressed how good he looked. I was like, how is this man almost 50 years old? And I mean, I guess you're never too old. Never too old to get back in shape. <laughs> yeah, um, he ever doesn't... lost shape? Like, he was always in like that. Well, he doesn't even look like he's aged that much outside yeah. of, like, I mean, his beard has, like, some more gray hairs yeah. on it. And, like, I guess he's not as muscular as he used to be, but... But I think this was a smart move on WWE pointing these two, putting these two against each other. I think a lot of people were disappointed in their last match at WrestleMania. This match, definitely the crowd was behind it. I watched it, and the crowd was just electric. I mean, it was awesome to watch. Not to mention, it kind of solves a mystery of who can beat Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar has kind of been portrayed as this unstoppable monster, destroying people like Roman Reigns, destroying John Cena. And just about anybody else is put in his way. And it was good to see finally, you know, get that that question answered. Who can beat him? Goldberg. So going forward, um, actually last night on Raw, Goldberg actually said that he will be returning to the Royal Rumble, which makes things interesting. Well, where does he go from the Royal Rumble? I mean, everybody's in the Royal Rumble. They, they've even had women in the Royal Rumble. But what is going to be the build-up from there? Where is he going to go from there? Is this going to be his last match? Or is it going to be somewhere down the road, maybe at WrestleMania? Well, do we know when he's coming in? Like, is he the first guy in the ring for that match? Um, I'm not 100% sure, and I can actually look that up. But, I mean, either way, I mean, just the fact that he's there says something. I don't think he's ever, was, I don't think he's ever been in a Royal Rumble, so this is going to be interesting to see. Yeah, so do you have a prediction for that match? I don't think he's going to win it, but I do think there may be interference from somebody that may set up a match later on down the road. That's just my honest God thought. I do see someone, maybe maybe a Seth Rollins winning it, maybe someone coming back from the past and winning it. I'm going to put up a bold prediction and say he actually ends up winning the match. You think so? Oh, yeah, man. I mean... Hey, when Goldberg says you're next, you're yeah. next. <laughs> <laughs> if he wins a Royal Rumble, anything's possible. But, I mean, you got people like The Undertaker's back, you know, and I think that's really cool. I mean, The Undertaker is another one of those really old relics that you love, but it's like, who can he compete against now, you know? Yeah, and, you know... Undertaker isn't aging as well as Goldberg, yeah. um, and it's, I don't know how many matches he's got left in him. Yeah. I mean, I, th I definitely think whatever run this is, this will probably be the last time we see him in the WWE. I think this all culminates to a w to a WrestleMania final victory. I think that's what's going to happen. I think it ends at WrestleMania. He'll wrestle a few matches here and there, but I think it officially ends at WrestleMania. I don't think he's coming back from it. I mean, but then it's interesting because you guys get you got people like Kane who's never taken time off. He's been wrestling forever. Yeah, and you know Kane won his match at Survivor Series, mm -hmm. taking on Luke Harper. So um, yeah, there's some interesting Kane things. Actually, my favorite thing with Kane was like back when uh, 
it was like he was a tag team with RVD on Raw. Yeah. And then like he they lost a match and, and he then, took the mask and off. And he took the mask oh, off. And then man. from there is like that was my favorite like era of Kane. Like yeah. after he took the mask right off. Right after he the sets mask. JR on fire, does all this other crazy stuff. I was like, geez. That was that really made me like more of a fan of Kane. Like yeah. when he was doing all that. And that's when he I think he's his best when like He's unmasked, he's unhinged, and he's just, like, going crazy. Yeah, I mean, I think over the years, Kane's kind of gone through many transitions. You've had the big red machine who ripped cages off to destroy the Undertaker. You've had, you know, the Kane taking the mask off. I remember back when Kane used to, he didn't even talk, and then he started talking. I was like, wait, what's going on? <laughs> he's taking his mask off. He's marrying Lita. And now he's, then he was corporate Kane for a while wearing a suit. And then it was, like, some Jekyll Hyde thing going on. Kane's gone through a lot of transitions, but he's been there as long as possible. I would like to see one last match. You know, I would like to see a Dead Man Inc. match, Undertaker and Kane versus somebody. I want to see that tag team again. You don't think it'd be more interesting just, like, watching them fight each other? (laughs) It's already been done a million and one times, and at this point, it's like, what would be the point? True. I I mean, mean, they have been on a team before as well. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, but I like that. I want to see them just destroy somebody. Maybe someone like, you know, the Wyatt, the Wyatt family. You know, those would be an interesting um, group that they could uh, rival with. Yeah, speaking of which, I mean, of these, like, new school wrestlers, like, which ones do you really like? Of the new school, um, I do like Seth Rollins. I like Dean Ambrose. I think, I mean, Roman Reigns is good. I mean, definitely gets a lot more flack from the crowd than he probably deserves. But I do like the guys like Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins. They, they just bring a really good energy to it. Um, guys like that have stuck around, like Randy Orton, big fan of him. Though he's been taking some time off here and there, expecting actually a kid soon, believe it or not. He's taking some time off for that right now. Um, what about Daniel Bryan, like the short bearded guy? Now, Daniel Bryan, actually, now that he's not wrestling, which is something, yeah, he's not wrestling anymore. He's now more, he's now the commissioner of SmackDown. It's interesting to see him still on TV, and it's great because he's such a good energy, and the crowd loves him. Um, it would be nice to see him wrestle again, but you know, I don't think that's going to happen due to health issues. Yeah, it's a shame because he was like one of my favorite new school wrestlers yeah. out of the ones I really paid attention to. Yeah. But I mean, those guys have made up the Shield; they're pretty cool too. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I mentioned two. Of, I mentioned actually all three of them, and actually at Survivor Series, which good build up. It seemed like there may be a chance that they could return back to the Shield ways, which would be great for all of them. Um, they actually united to put AJ Styles through a table. And actually, AJ Styles is another one. Actually, he did a lot of work with TNA and then the NJPW, and now he's here back in the States in the WWE, and he's, I loved it. I've, I've been wanting him in the WWE since I was like you know a teenager, so the fact he's in it now is pretty awesome. That's the crazy thing also, like, most of these guys have been wrestling since I was, like, a teen. Well, at least some of the new age wrestling. I mean, it's just crazy, like, that you do this so long, every week. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I think the WWE needs to do a little bit better of a job of, like, coming up with, like, a good gimmick for these new guys. I mean, like, because you think about back with, like, WCW, WWF, like, they had so many guys that were memorable. Yeah. And, like, now it's kind of, like... I mean, it, it's hit or miss. <laughs> I mean, there were some that were a little bit more over the top. Like, who can forget Doink the Clown? That, that, that was awesome. I mean, you got some weird ones out there, but you had good and whole household names. Like, I mean, there isn't a person, I think, on this planet that can't tell you that some of their best matches were The Rock and Stone Cold. Some of the classic matches of the WWE, some of the greatest wars. I mean, Triple H is still there, but, I mean, again, he's more of a, almost it seems like he's more of like a Vince McMahon role, you know? He'll kind of come down and, you know, be this villain. Then he's not afraid to get in the ring. And I think they're going to set up a match between him and Seth Rollins, which we'll probably talk about in a future episode. But it's interesting how you have all these new wrestlers, and then you still have the old ones still sprinkling in throughout the show. And they come back, and I think it's to keep the older fans interested. You can't make a bunch of money off of kids alone. Well, that's the thing they got to think about going forward. If the WWE is going to survive and continue to thrive, mm-hmm. they need to reconsider. I mean, somewhere along the line, they went PG with it. Yeah. And, you know, I think they should still continue to, you know, 
make it more of a mature show. Yeah. Make it one of those things where, like, the kids are like, oh, yeah, I'm watching this and I shouldn't be because, like, it's badass. That was the like, cool you know? thing about <laughs> it as a kid. You're, like, watching It's like, yeah, my mom would not let me watch it. I actually remember, actually, my mom had stopped me from watching wrestling for a while. I think it was also probably because I tried chokeslamming my sister, but that's just a story for a different day. <laughs> yeah, but I think that's going to that's gonna keep the old school fans interested more. And, yeah, just think back to, like, you know, there are yeah. times where, like, my parents didn't want to be watching it because they saw some stuff, like, you oh, know, like, the divas, is like, it? taking their tops off on Bond air. And, like, matches. <laughs> like, the thing with, I mentioned before with Kane, like, getting set, uh, set in JR on fire, yeah. and they're like, oh, this is sick. You yeah. know, like, they need to bring that stuff back, though. That's what made it badass. <laughs> it it kind of, you know, that was the, I, I dare say the Attitude Era was the golden age of wrestling. Because the WWE had competition, they had to compete with WCW, and WCW was at its best. And then you had WWF, and it, you, you couldn't, you could flip the channel between the two stations, and you're going to get something awesome. You're going to get a great product. And I think without that competition, I mean, wrestling brands like TNA and Ring of Honor Wrestling and NJPW, you don't compete with the WWE in terms of marketing and just overall image. There's no there's no competition for WWE. The only competition is who's buying that WWE channel for nine ninety nine a month and who's watching on Monday and Tuesday nights. Yeah, but I mean they still have to compete with that's keeping what I'm their saying. fan yeah. base up. And that's know? what I'm saying. That's the only competition they really have and I hope they put more work into creative, you know. Like I said, as in, you know, I stopped watching wrestling for probably, I remember there was a period actually I didn't watch it. It was probably when I was doing high school wrestling. I was like, well, this is just weird because this isn't the wrestling that I'm doing in high school. But, you know, and then I got back into it a few years ago. And it, it's been nostalgic because just to see some of those old faces now. Yeah, but I think, like, overall, we're looking mm-hmm. at the guys that, like, Brock Lesnar, Goldberg, yes. Undertaker, Kane. Yeah. And keeping some of these guys around is... I mean, I see it as more of a stopgap solution for them. Uh, and really, you know, moving forward, once these guys finally do call it quits for good, yeah. you know, they need to be able to, like, you know, do better with, like, the gimmicks for their new wrestlers. And do you got to build a story around the wrestlers that they do have. But I think going forward, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of wrestling out there that's going to – I think it's going to get better. I think, you know, with the rumors of Kurt Angle returning, you know, Maybe The Rock showing up again. I think I think that it's on the right track, and we're gonna we're gonna look at that in the future going forward. Well, I, the thing is about Rock coming back. I, that just sounds like a rumor to me. Well, why would does he need to come back? He's well, like he's making all this money being an actor. Like what was... that man shows up every time he needs to promote a movie. I mean, let's be honest here. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the end of our episode. We hope you enjoyed the WWE talk. And we may have guest analysts on in the future that are psyched about wrestling. It's not just me. We will. (laughs) We have more to come. We have more to show you. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video. And don't forget to leave some comments below. Take care.